I ran, my feet pounding against the shattered concrete of the once thriving city. Each step brought with it a chorus of pain, reminding me of the injuries I had accumulated in my desperate escape from the machine hunting me. The relentless whirring and clanking of its gears reverberated behind me, echoing through the empty streets. I glanced back and my stomach sank. The machine was closing in fast. Its cold, lifeless eyes were locked on me, its metallic limbs propelled it forward with terrifying speed. I couldn't outrun it. I had to find shelter, somewhere to hide. My mind raced through the options, a building with intact walls, a pile of rubble large enough to cover me, anything that could give me a moment's respite. There! A decaying building loomed ahead, its doorway partially obscured by debris. I swerved, ignoring the stabbing pain in my side, and sprinted towards it. The machine let out a piercing screech, its gears shifting as it adjusted its trajectory to follow me. I could almost feel its cold, unfeeling gaze burning into my back. I stumbled into the building, my legs giving way beneath me. I caught myself against a wall, pushing off and dragging myself further into the darkness. The machine was right behind me, its metallic limbs clanging against the concrete as it approached. I could hear its voice echoing off the walls, a cold, robotic monotone calling out, Halt, human! There was no time to waste. I scanned the room, my eyes adjusting to the dim light filtering through the cracks in the ceiling. I spotted a narrow gap between two broken walls and squeezed through, wincing as the jagged edges scraped against my arms. I held my breath, listening intently for the machine's movements. The room fell silent. I could hear my heartbeat thudding in my ears as I waited, my body pressed tightly against the cold stone. After what felt like an eternity, the machine's voice rang out again further away this time. Target lost. Resuming search pattern. I exhaled slowly, relief washing over me. I had bought myself some time. My hands shook as I pushed away from the wall, wiping the sweat from my brow. I could still hear the machine's voice echoing in the distance, but it was fading. I couldn't stay here. The machine would eventually return, its search pattern relentless. I had to move, find somewhere safer to hide. I slipped out of the building and crept along the shadowed alleyways, my eyes scanning for any sign of movement. My muscles were taut, ready to spring into action at the slightest hint of danger. After what felt like hours of aimless wandering, I stumbled upon a small cluster of buildings that seemed relatively intact. The windows were boarded up, the doors sealed shut, but the roofs were mostly whole. It was as good a place as any to rest and regroup. I found a partially open window and slipped inside, my feet landing softly on the dusty floor. The room was empty, save for a few overturned chairs and a broken table. I moved cautiously, checking each corner for any sign of life. Satisfied that I was alone, I settled down in a corner, pulling my knees to my chest. My mind was a whirlwind of fear and exhaustion. I had no idea how long I could keep running. The machines were tireless, their programming relentless. I had to find a way to survive in this wasteland, but I was alone and my resources were dwindling. I closed my eyes, the darkness behind my eyelids a welcome relief from the harsh light of the ruined world outside. My breathing slowed and for a brief moment, I allowed myself to rest. A voice startled me from my thoughts, and I instinctively reached for a weapon. You can't stay here, a woman said, her eyes wary as she stepped into the room. She wore a makeshift cloak, its fabric tattered and worn. The machines will find you. I know, I replied, my voice hoarse from disuse. I just needed a place to rest. She studied me for a moment, then nodded. There's a tribe of us not far from here. If you're willing to fight, you can join us. I hesitated, weighing my options. A tribe meant safety, but also responsibility. It meant sharing resources and following rules. But it was better than the alternative. I'll come, I said, pushing myself to my feet. Just show me the way. She nodded again, then turned and slipped out the door. I followed her into the night, my heart heavy with the knowledge that my fight for survival was only just beginning. The woman led me through the ruins, weaving in and out of alleyways with practiced ease. I struggled to keep up my body aching from the pursuit earlier. The city around us was silent, save for the occasional distant hum of a machine. Every shadow seemed to hide a threat, and every corner was an ambush waiting to happen. But the woman moved confidently, and I trusted her enough to follow. After what felt like hours, we reached a crumbling underpass. The structure loomed overhead, its massive concrete beams casting deep shadows. The woman stopped and turned to me, her eyes scanning the area before she motioned for me to follow. We ducked beneath a tattered tarp, entering a narrow passageway lined with scavenged metal sheets. 
I could hear voices ahead, murmurs echoing off the makeshift walls. As we emerged into the open, I was greeted by the sight of a small camp, its residents huddled around makeshift fires. The woman stepped forward, her voice low as she called out to the others. I've brought someone. A few heads turned, their eyes scanning me with suspicion. I felt the weight of their gaze, the tension in the air palpable. One man stepped forward, his expression hard as he sized me up. He was tall and burly, his clothes tattered and stained. A single eye glared at me from beneath a scarred brow. What's your name? He barked, his voice rough. I hesitated. My old name felt like a relic from a past life, one that had no place in this brutal world. Strider, I said finally. Strider, huh? The man grunted, his eye narrowing. What do you have to offer? Skills, I said, meeting his gaze. I know how to hunt, how to fight. I can scavenge. The man studied me for a moment, then turned to the others. Well, what do you think? The murmurs grew louder, some nodding in agreement, others shaking their heads. The man raised a hand, silencing the crowd. All right, Strider, you can stay, but you'll have to prove yourself. I nodded, understanding the unspoken challenge. In this world, survival was earned, not given. I would have to show them that I was worthy of their trust. The man turned to the woman who had brought me here. Take him to the shelter. He can start tomorrow. She nodded, then motioned for me to follow. I trailed behind her as she led me through the camp, my eyes taking in the sights and sounds of this new place. The shelters were crude, cobbled together from scraps of metal and fabric. The air was thick with the scent of cooking smoke and unwashed bodies. People huddled together in small groups, their eyes darting nervously from one shadow to the next. We reached a small shelter, its walls made of rusted metal sheets. The woman pushed aside the fabric covering the entrance and gestured for me to enter. Inside, the space was cramped, barely enough room for a single person to lie down. It's not much, she said, her voice soft, but it's safe. Get some rest. You'll need it. I nodded, my body sagging with exhaustion as I sank to the ground. The woman lingered for a moment, then turned and left, pulling the fabric closed behind her. I was alone, the darkness pressing in from all sides. I lay there for a long time, my mind racing as I tried to process everything that had happened. The machine attack, the escape, finding this tribe. It all felt surreal, like a fever dream. But the cold, hard ground beneath me was real, and the fear gnawing at my gut was undeniable. I didn't know what tomorrow would bring, but I knew one thing for certain. I had to survive. This tribe was my best chance, my only chance. I had to prove myself to show them that I was worth keeping around. It was the only way to earn their trust, to find a place among them. With that thought in mind, I closed my eyes, the fatigue finally dragging me into a restless sleep. The next morning, the sounds of the camp waking up pulled me out of sleep. People shuffled past my shelter, their hushed voices mingling with the distant echo of machinery. I rolled onto my back, my body stiff and sore from the hard ground. There was no time for rest, though. I had to prove myself. I pushed aside the fabric covering the entrance and stepped into the camp. The morning sun cast long shadows over the crumbling ruins, highlighting the grim faces of the tribe as they gathered around small fires, cooking whatever scraps they had managed to scavenge. The man from yesterday spotted me and approached, his eye narrowing. Ready to earn your keep? He asked, his voice rough. I nodded, trying to hide the exhaustion that weighed down my limbs. What do you need me to do? He grunted, turning to lead the way. Follow me. I trailed behind him as he wove through the camp, his strides long and purposeful. We reached a small clearing where a group of people were gathered around a pile of scrap metal and old tools. They all looked up as we approached, their eyes scanning me with suspicion. Listen up, the man barked, his voice echoing off the walls. This is Strider. He says he can hunt and scavenge. Let's see what he can do. He gestured towards the pile of tools and I stepped forward, grabbing a rusted knife. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. I turned to the group, meeting their gazes. Where do we start? A wiry man stepped forward, his face weathered and scarred. There's an old factory on the outskirts of the city. The machines have been spotted there, but it's also a good place to find supplies. We're heading there today. I nodded, slipping the knife into my belt. I'm ready. The man eyed me for a moment, then turned to the others. Let's move. We set off through the ruins, the man leading the way with a wary eye on the shadows. The rest of the group followed in silence, their eyes scanning the surroundings for any sign of danger. I fell into step behind them, my senses on high alert. The factory was a long walk from the camp, and the journey was fraught with danger. 
We passed through narrow alleyways and over crumbling bridges, the echo of our footsteps the only sound. Every now and then a distant metallic hum would reach our ears, and we would freeze, our breath caught in our throats. But the machines kept their distance and we pressed on. As we approached the factory, the man raised a hand, signaling for us to stop. Stay quiet, he whispered, his eyes fixed on the building. We don't know what's in there. We crept towards the entrance, our footsteps soft on the broken concrete. The factory loomed overhead, its windows shattered and walls streaked with rust. The man motioned for us to fan out, and we slipped inside, our eyes adjusting to the dim light. The interior was a maze of rusted machinery and crumbling walls. We moved cautiously, our footsteps echoing off the metal surfaces. The air was thick with dust, and the scent of oil clung to everything. I kept my knife at the ready, my eyes scanning for any sign of movement. We searched the factory in silence, picking through the piles of scrap metal and abandoned tools. Every now and then someone would find something useful, and a quiet murmur would ripple through the group. But our luck was running out, and the pile of supplies remained meager. Just as I was about to give up hope, I heard a faint sound from the far corner of the factory. I turned, my eyes narrowing as I strained to hear. There it was again, a low hum that sent a shiver down my spine. The machines, I whispered, my voice barely audible. The others froze, their eyes darting towards the sound. The man stepped forward, his knife drawn. We have to move, now. We scrambled towards the exit, our footsteps echoing through the factory. The hum grew louder, reverberating off the walls. I glanced back, my heart pounding in my chest as I caught sight of a metallic shape moving through the shadows. The machines were here. We broke into a sprint, the factory's entrance growing closer with each step. The hum turned into a roar, and I felt the ground tremble beneath me as the machines drew closer. I pushed myself harder, my breath coming in ragged gasps. We burst out of the factory and into the daylight, our feet pounding against the pavement as we ran. The machines followed, their metallic limbs clanging against the concrete. The camp was still miles away and we had no choice but to scatter. I turned sharply, ducking into a narrow alleyway. The machines roared behind me, their voices cold and robotic. I pushed myself harder, my legs burning as I ran. I had to survive, had to make it back to the camp. After what felt like hours, I reached the ruins where the tribe was camped. I stumbled into the clearing, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The man from earlier was there, his eyes wide as he took in my disheveled appearance. The machines, I managed to gasp, they found us. The camp was a flurry of activity as the tribe prepared for the machines' arrival. People gathered what few weapons they had, mostly makeshift spears and knives, while others fortified the shelters. I could see the fear in their eyes, the desperation that drove them to fight despite the odds. The one-eyed leader stepped forward, his face set in grim determination. We have to strike first, he said, his voice carrying over the din. If we let them come to us, we're done for. He turned to me, his eye narrowing. Strider, you've seen them up close. What do you think? We can't fight them head on, I said, my voice steady. We need to hit them where they're weakest. The leader nodded, a grim smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Agreed. We'll split into two groups. One will draw their attention while the other flanks them. It's the only way. I was placed in the second group tasked with circling around to attack the machines from the side. We gathered our weapons and moved out, keeping low as we navigated the ruined streets. The sun was sinking low on the horizon, casting long shadows over the buildings. We reached our position and waited, our breath shallow as we listened for the machines. The leader's group would be making their move any moment now, drawing the machines away from the camp. I could feel the tension in the air, the anticipation that came before a fight. Then we heard it the distant roar of the machine's engines. The leader's group had made contact. We moved quickly, slipping through the alleyways towards the machines. I could see them in the distance, their metallic forms gleaming in the fading light. We fanned out, keeping low as we approached. The machines were focused on the leader's group, their weapons trained on the humans who had dared to stand against them. I could see the flicker of gunfire, the flash of metal as the two sides clashed. Now! I hissed, and we charged. The machines were taken by surprise, their attention diverted as we attacked from the side. I swung my knife at the nearest machine, the blade biting into its metallic shell. It let out a high-pitched screech, turning its cold, unfeeling eyes towards me. I ducked beneath its swinging arm, driving my knife into the exposed wiring. The others followed suit, their weapons striking at the machine's weak points. 
We moved as one, a coordinated assault that sent the machines reeling. The leader's group pressed forward, their weapons striking from the front. The machines fought back, their mechanical limbs lashing out at anyone who got too close. I narrowly avoided a blow that would have sent me flying, rolling to the side and plunging my knife into the machine's back. Sparks flew as I twisted the blade, the machine collapsing with a final shuddering sigh. The fight was brutal and short. The combined assault from both groups proved too much for the machines, and they fell one by one. I stood in the aftermath, my chest heaving as I took in the scene. The ground was littered with the remains of the machines, their metallic shells twisted and broken. We had won. The leader approached, his face smeared with dirt and blood. Good work, he said, clapping me on the shoulder. You did well out there. Thanks, I said, my voice hoarse. We've got a long way to go, he continued, his gaze fixed on the horizon. But this is a good start. As we made our way back to the camp, the mood was grim despite our victory. We had lost several people in the fight, and those who remained were exhausted. The camp was quiet as we arrived, the residents huddled around the fires. The leader called for a meeting, his voice carrying over the camp. We've won today, he said, but this is just the beginning. The machines will come back, and they'll come back stronger. We need to be ready. There were murmurs of agreement, but I could see the fear in their eyes. They knew what was coming, and they knew the fight would only get harder from here. As I sat by the fire, my mind raced with thoughts of the battle to come. The machines were relentless, their programming unyielding. They would stop at nothing to wipe us out. We had to be smarter, faster. Our survival depended on it. The leader pulled me aside after the meeting, his face a mask of concentration. We need to talk, Strider he said, his voice low and firm. We've got a big task ahead of us, and I need you to lead it. I nodded, the weight of his words settling on my shoulders. What do you have in mind? We need supplies, he said, looking out towards the horizon. Food, weapons, anything that can keep the tribe going. But more than that, we need information. We can't afford to stumble into another machine patrol without knowing what we're up against. And you want me to gather that? I asked, though I already knew the answer. He turned to face me, his eye gleaming with determination. Yes, you've shown you can handle yourself out there. I trust you to get this done. Who's coming with me? I asked, mentally preparing myself for the mission ahead. I'll give you a team of five, he said, his voice steady. You'll need to move quickly and quietly. The machines have been patrolling more frequently. I nodded, absorbing the information. When do we leave? Tomorrow at dawn, he said, his gaze hard. I don't need to tell you how important this is, Strider. The tribe is counting on you. I won't let you down, I promised, meeting his gaze. The leader patted me on the shoulder before turning away, leaving me to prepare for the mission. I gathered my team, handpicking those I knew I could trust. They were all seasoned scavengers, familiar with the dangers that lay ahead. The morning was cold and quiet as we set out, the sun barely peeking over the horizon. We moved quickly through the ruins, keeping low and silent as we navigated the maze of broken buildings. The machines had been increasing their patrols, and we couldn't afford to be seen. Our first stop was an old warehouse, a place we hoped would have supplies. We slipped inside, our weapons at the ready as we searched the dusty shelves. The air was thick with the scent of mildew, the floor coated in a layer of grime. There's not much here, one of my team members muttered, holding up a half-empty can of beans. Keep looking, I said, moving further into the building. There's got to be something useful. We scoured the warehouse, picking through the rubble and debris. It was slow, tedious work, but we eventually found a stash of canned goods hidden in a back room. It wasn't much, but it was enough to keep the tribe fed for a few days. We moved on to our next target, a small outpost rumored to have weapons. The journey was long and grueling, the sun beating down on us as we made our way through the desolate landscape. By the time we reached the outpost, our bodies were aching and our nerves were frayed. The outpost was a small, nondescript building, its walls covered in a thick layer of dust. We approached cautiously, our weapons drawn as we searched for any signs of life. The building was empty, but it was clear someone had been there recently. Look at this, one of my team members said, holding up a piece of paper. It's a map. I took the map from him, my eyes scanning the faded lines. It was a detailed layout of the surrounding area, marking the locations of several machine patrols. This was exactly what we needed. Let's take what we can and get out of here, I said, tucking the map into my bag. We searched the outpost, finding a stash of weapons hidden beneath a loose floorboard. 
There were rifles, knives, and even a few grenades. It was a treasure trove compared to what we were used to, and we loaded up as much as we could carry. As we made our way back to the camp, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the ruins. My mind raced with thoughts of the map and what it meant for our chances against the machines. With this information, we had a chance to strike back. The leader was waiting for us when we arrived, his eye gleaming with anticipation. What did you find? We've got weapons, I said, gesturing to the bags at our feet, and a map of the machine's patrols. The leader's face lit up, a rare smile spreading across his features. Good work, Strider. This is exactly what we needed. He turned to the rest of the tribe, raising his voice to address them. We've got the tools we need to fight back. It's time we take the fight to the machines. The tribe let out a cheer, their faces alight with hope. For the first time in a long while, they had a reason to believe that they could win this fight. We didn't have long to savor our small victory. The leader was quick to mobilize us for the next mission, building on the momentum we'd gained from our successful raid. With the map of the machine's patrols, we had a clearer idea of their movements. Our goal was simple, disrupt their operations and weaken their hold on the city. I led my team through the ruins again, our footsteps echoing in the stillness of the abandoned streets. The only light came from the sliver of moon above, casting faint shadows across the rubble. We moved with purpose, sticking close to the routes outlined on the map. The target was a warehouse deep in machine territory, rumored to be a key point in their supply chain. If we could hit them there, it would send a strong message and buy us some much-needed breathing room. But as we approached, something felt off. The air was thick with a strange hum, unlike anything I'd heard before. Do you hear that? whispered one of my team members, his voice barely audible. I nodded, my hand tightening around my knife. Stay alert, something's not right. We pressed on, moving silently through the darkness. The hum grew louder, filling the air with a low mechanical drone. I could see the warehouse up ahead, its windows glowing faintly in the moonlight. We crept towards the entrance, sticking close to the walls. My heart pounded in my chest as I listened for any sign of movement. The hum was deafening now, echoing off the walls and rattling my bones. Suddenly, a harsh light flooded the street, blinding us. I threw up my arm to shield my eyes, my knife slipping from my grasp. I heard a shout, followed by the sound of metal against concrete. Machines! Someone yelled, and chaos erupted. I blinked rapidly, trying to clear my vision. The light was searing, casting long shadows across the street. I could make out the shapes of the machines moving towards us, their limbs gleaming in the moonlight. These machines were different from the ones we'd fought before. They were smaller, sleeker, their limbs moving with a terrifying grace. Their eyes glowed red in the darkness, scanning the street with a cold, unfeeling gaze. Fall back, I shouted, scrambling to my feet. We need to regroup. We turned and ran, our footsteps echoing off the walls as we fled. The machines followed, their metallic limbs clanking against the concrete. I could hear their cold, robotic voices echoing in the night, calling out to one another in a language I couldn't understand. We ducked into an alleyway, pressing ourselves against the wall. The machines swept past us, their eyes glowing in the darkness. I held my breath, my heart racing as I waited for them to move on. Once the street was clear, I motioned for the others to follow me. We moved quickly, sticking to the shadows as we navigated the maze of alleyways. My mind raced with thoughts of the machines and their terrifying new design. They were faster, smarter, and more ruthless than anything we'd faced before. We reached a small, crumbling building and slipped inside, the cold air biting at my skin. I sank to the ground, my chest heaving as I tried to catch my breath. What were those things? One of my team members asked, his voice trembling. I don't know, I said, shaking my head but they're new. We can't fight them, another said, his voice barely a whisper. Not like this. I glanced around the room, meeting each of their gazes. We'll find a way, I said, my voice firm, but we need to regroup first. We sat in silence for a moment, the weight of the situation settling on our shoulders. The machines were evolving, adapting to our tactics. We had to be smarter, more cautious, after a while, we slipped out of the building, moving quickly through the ruins. The machine's patrols were more frequent now, their eyes scanning the streets with an unrelenting gaze. We stuck close to the shadows, our breath shallow as we navigated the maze of alleyways. By the time we reached the camp, the sun was beginning to rise. The leader was waiting for us, his face set in a grim line. What happened? he asked, his voice low. New machines, I said, shaking my head. 
Faster. Smarter. We didn't stand a chance. He nodded, his gaze hard. We need to be ready. They won't stop. I know, I said, meeting his gaze. We'll find a way. The leader nodded again, then turned to address the camp. We need to be vigilant, he said, his voice carrying over the camp. The machines are getting smarter, but so are we. We can't afford to let our guard down. I stood in the crowd, my mind racing with thoughts of the new machines and what they meant for our chances of survival. The fight was only going to get harder from here, but I was determined to see it through. The camp was abuzz with fear and anticipation as we prepared for the next mission. The leader called for another meeting, his voice grim as he outlined our target. A machine stronghold. From the map, we knew this was where the new machines were stationed. Attacking it was a bold move, but we had no choice. We're going to hit them where it hurts, he said, his eye scanning the crowd. But we need to be smart about it. We can't afford to lose anyone. I listened, the weight of the mission pressing on my shoulders. The machines had stepped up their patrols, and they wouldn't hesitate to retaliate if we pushed them too far. But we had to try. Our survival depended on it. The leader approached me after the meeting, his gaze steady. You're leading this one, Strider. I trust you to get the job done. I nodded, the responsibility heavy in my chest. We'll make it work. He patted me on the shoulder. Good. We'll be ready to move out tonight. As dusk fell, we gathered our weapons and prepared to move. The mood was tense, the silence broken only by the rustling of gear. We had a small group, just enough to make a quick strike and disappear before the machines could respond. We set out through the ruins, the shadows growing longer as the sun dipped below the horizon. The map guided us, its lines etched in my mind as we navigated the twisting alleys. The stronghold was on the outskirts of the city, a fortress of steel and concrete that loomed over the landscape. We reached the stronghold under cover of darkness, the moon casting faint light on the walls. We crouched behind a pile of rubble, scanning the area for any signs of movement. The machines patrolled the perimeter, their eyes glowing in the night. We need to find a way in, I whispered, my voice barely audible. One of the team members pointed to a gap in the wall just wide enough for us to slip through. We moved quickly, ducking behind the rubble and making our way towards the entrance. My heart pounded in my chest as I listened for the machines, my knife clutched tightly in my hand. We squeezed through the gap and into the stronghold, the air thick with the scent of oil and machinery. The walls towered above us, their surfaces cold and unfeeling. The machine's hum echoed off the metal, a low drone that rattled my bones. Stay close, I whispered, leading the way through the maze of corridors. We moved cautiously, our footsteps soft on the metal floor. The stronghold was a labyrinth of twisting passageways and towering walls, the machines patrolling the corridors with ruthless efficiency. We rounded a corner and froze, my heart leaping into my throat. A machine stood at the end of the corridor, its eyes scanning the darkness. We ducked into a doorway, holding our breath as we waited for it to pass. The seconds stretched on, the machine's hum growing louder as it drew closer. Finally, it moved on, its footsteps fading into the distance. We slipped out of the doorway and continued down the corridor, our breaths shallow as we navigated the stronghold. We reached a large room, the ceiling stretching high above us. Machinery lined the walls, their gears and wires humming with energy. But what caught my attention was the cage in the center of the room. A group of humans huddled inside, their faces gaunt and pale. They looked up as we approached, their eyes wide with fear. We need to get them out one of my team members said, his voice barely a whisper. I nodded, moving towards the cage. The lock was old and rusted, and I slipped my knife into the mechanism, prying it open with a grunt of effort. The door creaked open and the prisoners scrambled out, their eyes darting towards the machines. We have to move, I said, gesturing for them to follow us. We led them through the stronghold, sticking close to the shadows as we made our way towards the exit. The machines were nowhere in sight, but their hum echoed off the walls, a constant reminder of the danger that lurked around every corner. We reached the gap in the wall and slipped through, the cool night air biting at my skin. The prisoners followed, their eyes scanning the darkness as we moved through the ruins. The camp was still miles away, and the machines wouldn't stay in their stronghold for long. We pressed on through the night, the journey long and grueling. The prisoners were exhausted, their feet dragging as they stumbled over the rubble. We had to stop several times, my heart racing as I listened for any sign of the machines. But we reached the camp as the sun began to rise, the leader waiting for us with a look of relief. The prisoners collapsed onto the ground, their breaths coming in ragged gasps. 
We did it, I said, meeting the leader's gaze. He nodded, a rare smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. You did good, Strider. The leader wasted no time after our return from the stronghold. The people we rescued were in rough shape, their bodies weak and their minds worn. Some had been in captivity for weeks, their will to survive stretched to the limit. As the others tended to them, the leader pulled me aside. We have to get the rest out, he said, his voice low. There are more people in that stronghold. You saw the cages. I nodded, already knowing what he was going to ask. I can lead another team back there, but we'll need more people. You'll have them, he replied, meeting my gaze. I'll gather everyone who can fight. We go tonight. By the time night fell, we had assembled a larger team. The leader had hand-picked the best fighters from the tribe, and I could see the determination in their eyes. We knew the stakes. This rescue wasn't just about freeing captives. It was about striking back against the machines, showing them that we wouldn't be caged. We moved out quietly, the moon our only guide as we slipped through the ruins. The stronghold was familiar to me now, its looming walls etched in my mind. We approached the gap in the wall cautiously, my breath catching as I listened for any sign of movement. But the night was still, the machines oblivious to our approach. We slipped inside, the stronghold eerily silent. The air was thick with tension as we moved through the corridors, our footsteps echoing softly on the metal floor. I could hear the hum of machinery in the distance, the machine's patrols moving somewhere in the stronghold. We reached the central room, my heart pounding in my chest as I peeked around the corner. The cages were still there, filled with more prisoners than before. I could see their faces, their eyes wide with fear as they huddled together in the darkness. I turned back to the others, my voice low. We need to move fast. Once we open those cages, the machines will know we're here. They nodded, their grips tightening on their weapons. We moved into the room, our footsteps muffled by the hum of the machinery. I slipped my knife into the lock, prying it open with a grunt of effort. The door creaked open and the prisoners scrambled out, their eyes darting towards the corridors. Stay close, I whispered, guiding them towards the exit. We led them through the stronghold, sticking close to the shadows as we made our way towards the gap in the wall. My heart raced with every step, my ears straining to hear the machines. The captives moved quietly, their feet shuffling over the cold metal floor. We were almost at the exit when a high-pitched whine echoed through the corridors. I turned my breath catching as I saw a machine round the corner, its eyes locked onto us, its limbs moving with terrifying speed. Move! I shouted, pushing the prisoners towards the exit. We broke into a sprint, our footsteps echoing off the walls as we fled. The machines roared behind us, their metallic limbs clanging against the concrete. I could hear their cold, robotic voices echoing in the night, calling out to one another in that strange mechanical language. The gap in the wall loomed ahead, and we squeezed through, the prisoners following close behind. The machines were right behind us, their eyes glowing in the darkness. We ran through the ruins, our breaths coming in ragged gasps as we navigated the maze of alleyways. The machines were relentless, their footsteps echoing in the night as they pursued us. We ducked into a building, pressing ourselves against the walls as we listened to them sweep past. My heart pounded in my chest, my knife clutched tightly in my hand. Once the street was clear, I motioned for the others to follow. We moved quickly, sticking to the shadows as we made our way through the ruins. The machine's hum echoed in the distance, a constant reminder of the danger that lurked around every corner. We reached the camp as dawn broke, the leader waiting for us with a look of relief. The prisoners collapsed onto the ground, their breaths coming in ragged gasps. I could see the fear in their eyes, the haunted look that spoke of weeks spent in captivity. We did it, I said, meeting the leader's gaze. He nodded a rare smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. You did good, Strider. The day after the rescue, the camp was a tense place. The freed prisoners were being looked after, but the tribe was clearly nervous about what might come next. Rumors spread about machine retaliation, and people whispered about whether we had gone too far. The leader called a meeting, the entire tribe gathering in the central clearing. I stood at his side, my heart heavy as I listened to the murmurs. The mood was tense, the air thick with fear. We can't keep doing this, one man shouted, his voice shaking. We're going to bring the machines down on us. They're already on us, the leader replied, his voice steady. We can't just sit back and do nothing. But we have to think about the tribe, another person said, her gaze darting between the leader and me. We can't risk everything on these raids. I stepped forward, my voice firm. We have to fight back. If we don't, the machines will destroy us all. 
A murmur rippled through the crowd, the fear palpable. The leader raised a hand, calling for silence. Strider's right, he said, his gaze steady. We have to stand our ground. But what if the machines come for us? Someone asked, their voice barely audible. We'll be ready, the leader replied, his voice carrying over the crowd. We have weapons, and we have each other. I could see the uncertainty in their eyes, the fear that gripped them. They were right to be scared, but we couldn't afford to let that fear paralyze us. We have to be smart about this, I said, meeting their gazes. The machines won't stop, but we can fight back. We have to show them that we're not going to be pushed around. The murmurs grew louder, the crowd beginning to divide. Some nodded in agreement, while others shook their heads in disbelief. The fear was palpable, the tension thick in the air. A man stepped forward, his face twisted in anger. This is madness, he shouted, pointing a finger at me. You're going to get us all killed. We're already dead if we don't fight, I replied, meeting his gaze. The machines won't stop until they've wiped us out. The leader stepped forward, his voice low and steady. We all knew the risks when we joined this tribe, but this is bigger than any of us. If we don't stand together, we're lost. The crowd fell silent, the weight of his words settling on their shoulders. I could see the fear in their eyes, but also a glimmer of hope. They knew the truth that our only chance of survival was to fight back. We need to be ready for what's coming, I said, my voice steady. The machines won't stop, but neither will we. The leader nodded, his gaze sweeping over the crowd. We'll fortify the camp and set up patrols. We have to stay vigilant. The crowd began to disperse, the fear still hanging in the air. People moved quickly, gathering their weapons and preparing for what lay ahead. I could see the worry etched on their faces, the uncertainty of what was to come. As the sun set, the camp was quiet, the only sound the distant hum of machinery. I stood by the fire, the flames casting long shadows over the ground. The leader approached, his gaze steady. You did well today, he said, his voice low. I hope it was enough, I replied, my gaze fixed on the flames. It will be, he said, his voice firm. We'll get through this. I nodded, my mind racing with thoughts of the machines and the battle that lay ahead. The tribe was counting on us, and we couldn't afford to let them down. The leader clapped me on the shoulder before turning away, leaving me to my thoughts. The night was cold, the air biting at my skin. I stood by the fire, the flames flickering in the darkness as I prepared myself for the fight to come. The following days passed in a blur of preparation and fear. The camp was abuzz with activity as we fortified the walls, laid traps, and set up patrols. Everyone knew the machines were coming, and they all worked with grim determination to be ready. The leader gathered us the night before, his face set in grim determination. This is it, he said, his voice low but firm. The machines will be here soon. We have to hold the line. He turned to me, his eye narrowing. Strider, you'll be on the front line. I need you to hold them back. I nodded, the weight of his words settling on my shoulders. We won't let them through. As dawn broke, the camp was eerily quiet. The tribe huddled together, their weapons clutched tightly in their hands. The air was thick with fear, the anticipation palpable. I stood on the front line, my knife in hand, my heart pounding in my chest. The first sign of the machines came as a distant hum, growing louder with each passing second. I could feel the ground tremble beneath my feet as they approached, their engines roaring. My breath caught in my throat as I caught sight of them on the horizon, their metallic limbs gleaming in the early morning light. Get ready, I called my voice steady despite the fear gnawing at my gut. The machines advanced, their cold, unfeeling eyes fixed on us. The leader gave the signal and the camp erupted in gunfire. Bullets ricocheted off the machine's armor, sparks flying as they pressed forward. Hold the line, I shouted, slashing at the nearest machine. The machines were relentless, their limbs swinging with terrifying speed. I ducked beneath a blow, driving my knife into the exposed wiring. Sparks flew as the machine shuddered, collapsing with a final shuddering sigh. We fought with everything we had, our weapons striking at the machine's weak points. The ground was slick with oil and blood, the air thick with the stench of burning metal. I could hear the screams of the wounded, the roar of the machines echoing in the chaos. The leader was at my side, his eye gleaming with determination as he struck down one machine after another. We can't let them through, he shouted, his voice barely audible over the din. We won't, I replied, my grip tightening on my knife. The machines pressed forward, their ranks seemingly endless. We were forced to fall back, the ground slick with debris and oil. The tribe fought with everything they had, their weapons striking with desperate strength. 
Hours passed, the sun rising high in the sky as we held the line. My muscles burned with exhaustion, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The machines were relentless, their limbs swinging with terrifying speed. I ducked beneath a blow, driving my knife into the exposed wiring. Sparks flew as the machine shuddered, collapsing with a final shuddering sigh. We fell back further, the machines advancing on the camp. The leader stood tall, his eye gleaming with determination as he held his ground. We can't let them win, he shouted, his voice ringing out over the chaos. We won't, I replied, my knife slashing through the air. The fight was brutal, the machines relentless in their pursuit, but we fought with everything we had, our weapons striking with desperate strength. The ground was littered with the remains of the machines, their limbs twisted and broken. As the sun began to set, the machines finally began to retreat. The tribe let out a cheer, their voices echoing off the walls. We had won. The leader approached me, his face set in a grim smile. We did it, he said, his voice low. We did, I replied, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The camp was a sea of exhaustion and relief. The tribe huddled together in the aftermath. We had fought for our lives and we had won. The machines were relentless, but so were we.